All right, guys, welcome aboard, and we've got the crotch cam active. You're welcome. And I'm doing that just to kind of demonstrate what we got going on here. So I've got a VKB uh, Gunfighter 3 Ultimate. It's the heavy stick, uh, metal stick. I've got the, uh, I think it's a 20 centimeter uh, extension on it. And right now what I've got are heavy cams. I've got, I want to say 10 or 20s. I think they're 20s on the springs. And I've tightened down the dry clutch so it'll hold its position. So I'm going to move that there and you can see that it's coinciding with my movement. You can see that the stick uh, is staying in place. All right, and I'm not having to put a whole lot of force. I mean, I could I could do this with a finger and it's, it's no problem. All right, so I've had a lot of people tell me about this and say, this is the way forward. Um, I like it and I don't like it. Let's talk about it. Stig Ray is town six, you're cleared to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south to north, left in, right out. So what I see with guys a lot of times is that they're over controlling the aircraft. So one of the things that we can do to get over that is of course practice and just get good. But the other is we can mess with our saturation and our curves. All right, so let's take a look at what I've got for my curves here and uh, saturation. So you see right here for my X axis, I've only got about a 14 uh, for the uh, roll and then for the pitch, Let's just take a look. I've got about 15. Okay. I typically recommend the people to start out at about 20, 25. Okay. And I know there was recently a change with the beta that got pushed out and I definitely did notice a little bit more roll and I've been kind of playing with this. So I'm just going to crank that up to about 22. Okay. That's, that's fine. We'll leave that there for my collective. Let's take a look. And yeah, I've got quite a bit cause I like to have some granularity with my collective, but you can see I've got 33. I don't like to mess with the saturation on that stuff because what I've found at least as my brain understands it is that you're actually losing some of your throw. Okay. And, and I've noticed that particularly in this where I'm, I'm pushing the stick as far forward as I go and I cannot get the nose down because I've lost some of that movement when I, when I mess around with saturation. Uh, so I don't like to do that. Those are the curves that I recommend at least kind of starting out and I get you going. Okay. But the big thing that you got to work on is micro movements. Okay. So again, we've got that symbology right there in the center, our acceleration cue and our velocity vector. Uh, that's going to want to follow it. So I start bringing in the power a little bit and that's too much. I can tell and I uh, need to get the uh, pedals back centered there. All right, so I'm just going to pull in a little bit of power. Let the aircraft tell me what it wants to do. It wants to go to the right. So I'm going to just give it a little bit of left. Okay. And we don't need to keep that little circle dead balls in the center. Okay. It's okay. If it drifts off a little bit, we're hovering. That's fine. There's going to be some movement. And as it has been pointed out, you can look outside the window too, right? So we can see other things and sort of hover based on those things. But if we're looking at a symbology, which I do recommend because when you start flying this thing at night and it's super dark, symbology is the only thing you got going for you. But notice how my hand is barely moving. Okay, I'm making very micro movements, but make no mistake, I am making movements and I am making corrections to the aircraft. Okay, so you can see very micro movements. If I wanna slide a little bit left, I'm just gonna let that ball just slide over and I'm just going to take a little bit out. Okay, look how tiny these move these movements are, right? You're not over here like Tom Cruise freaking throwing your hands around so you can turn. That's not what we need to do to fly the aircraft. So now we're going to go forward. I'm just going to let that nose fall down. Just let it pitch forward. Let that ball slide up to the top. I'm going to hit the transition mode and look for my flight path vector just a little bit of power so I don't scrape the ground and again I'm just a little bit of forward pressure on that cyclic I'm not throwing it forward I don't need to okay Bring a little bit of pedals try to keep my uh, nose to tail trim put that flight path vector in front of me keep it in front of me keep that acceleration cue and velocity vector straight up and down okay I'm gonna hit the trimmer and work with my pedals to get this thing trimmed out the way I want it and there we go. So now if I want to slow down, I'm going to let the nose pitch up. I'm going to take out some collective. I'm going to keep that flight path vector on the horizon. And I'm just letting that nose come back. I'm going to hit the trimmer again just for my pedals. Gave me just a little bit of a woe boy, and that's okay. 
Okay, now I'm just gonna start easing that nose back down as I'm pulling in some power. But again, you notice, I'm not throwing the aircraft around. It's micro movements. So if you're unable, if you're un incapable of making those micro movements right now, then I highly suggest that you start messing with your curves a little bit more, maybe maybe be even a little bit more judicious about the level of curve that you put in. But tiny, tiny movements, and I think, I think that's the big problem. I think a lot of people have problems with all the helicopters because they're just not used to doing those, or maybe they just don't fully understand how micro movements uh, you need to have. So I've been messing around with this dry clutch. I like it. But I also don't like it. There's some things that I don't like about it. One of the things, we'll see if I can't get this thing to go into a hold mode. One of the things I've I've kind of struggled with with the dry clutching is uh, it's the tolerances for the hold modes are still pretty pretty narrow. So you can see I had a pretty decent hover. Hold mode should definitely grab that. And we're gonna go on a ride because there's just enough motion imparted into the control stick that now we're gonna start oscillating. And we're going to go control. I'm not even causing this to happen. So oh, this is just happening on its own. We're going for a flight. It's like riding a horse. The horse decides to go somewhere. But look how much extreme movement I get when I start yanking the, the cyclic left and right. Okay. We don't need to do that. All right. That's too much. Small movements. Keep our airspeed up. Keep that nose forward. And it's small movements. That's all we need to do to turn, okay? Keep the nose forward. Trim it out a little bit. Nose forward. Just a little bit. Okay. Even in a, a panic situation, like suddenly a tree you don't see, you don't need to yank on the stick. It's just small, small movements. All right. So anyway, really the point of this video is just to sort of demonstrate some of those small movements that we do need to worry about. I'm still torn on the whole dry clutch situation. Uh, I'm still playing with it, not giving up on it yet. I don't like that I can't use my hold modes uh, the way that I'm used to, uh, but I do like this being able to kind of not have to fight the springs because that does get exhausting. And I will tell you with the Apache, it's not a big deal because you do have the force trim uh, switch, but I'll tell you, when I was flying the Kiowa, the pre-build that, that I've been testing out, I spend a lot of time like this with the stick forward. And fighting that heavy spring, it gets pretty exhausting. So I think this is probably something that I want to get a little bit better at and have a better understanding of, of how to fly like this because it's going to help out a lot with those type of aircraft. So anyway, hope uh, this was at least a little bit informative about sort of control touch and... Uh, Appreciate you watching the Crouch Cam. We'll see you next time. Take it easy.